we will see Dr. Hippie. That is no doubt at all. I'm Raven. Joining me, of course, is Sol to bring you Ooh. this last quarterfinal for the World Championships. Hot Meowth versus Hippie. Cannot wait. Yeah, I'm absolutely stoked. Uh, after North America being in such a dominant position coming into this top eight, they've all kind of crumbled away one by one, and Hot Meowth is the last player with the, the weight of the local fans on his back. Yeah, definitely going to be feeling a lot of pressure, but I've got a question for you, Sol. Go on. If I asked you two weeks ago, mm. do you think we're going to be casting a patron blood warrior oh. at BlizzCon, would you have said yes? I would have thought I was having a, a wonderful, twisted dream. Uh, Patron and BlizzCon has been through a turbulent relationship. The original nerf hit just before 2015 BlizzCon. They couldn't keep a good deck down. Patron came out in force, had a huge impact on that championship. It's been out of the meta for so long now, but Hot me out, just out of left field with this insane Blood Warriors, one patron, double arcane giant, pyro commanding shout, combo warrior. I can't wait to get stuck into this series. I was going to say, I just hope it's not banned and we get the good news. The shaman goes down. The warrior is live for Hot me out. Can't wait. Yeah, you know, Hot me out actually said, you know, he felt he needed to take a risk. The players could resubmit deck list between right. opening week and then the top eight of BlizzCon here. So he took that risk and he's actually got the creator of the deck flown out to practice with for the past okay. few days. And we are starting exactly how we wanted to. Interesting decks on both sides of the field here. Hot me out with the Patron Blood Warrior and Doc Tippy with Dragon Warrior, but by no means standard at all. No, this is a really aggressive list from Dr. Hippie. He's packed in about as much early game as you possibly can. Double Blood to Ica, Finley, double champion. Sure, all fairly standard so far. Double Fairy Dragon, Black Wing Technician, Fierce Monkey, Frothing Berserker, a Wrathy Weaponsmith, all cards in this deck. So Dr. Hippie is trying to curve out as a aggressively as possible, just beat down on his opponents with this particular build of Dragon Warrior. And I feel like Dragon Warrior might be well positioned against this deck because in my limited experience with this particular build of you know Arcane Giant Combo Warrior, they struggle against, say, just two medium-sized chunky minions on the board. They don't really have good game to interact with that kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of this deck from Hot Meowth has fantastic AoE potential, clearing huge balls. It's almost like it was built to beat Zoo. For example, you just wipe the board and stay on top from there. Right off the bat here, interesting decision from Hot Meowth. He went Fiery War Axe on two instead of Armor Smith on two. So essentially, Fiery War Axe has charge whenever you play it. So if he'd have front loaded the one power of the Armor Smith, he would have been able to deal with any three mana play from his opponent, a Fierce Monkey or a Frothing Berserker. Yes, uh, you completely agree, but. One of the you know, points of this deck is that you can drop Armor Smith, Command and Shout, and then do ridiculous things to just out-health your opponent a lot of the time. So there's potential that he might have been trying to keep hold of the Armor Smith for a bigger swing turn later on as opposed to just play on two. And then if it just gets cleaned up by War Axe, like you know, Platitica War Axe, for example, then you just dropped one out of your two Armor Smiths in the deck. Straight away, we're seeing some unconventional stuff coming out here from Hot Meowth, just burning away a whirlwind to take care of that one remaining health. And we're going to see un unconventional stuff up the wazoo out of this deck. It's <laughs> going to do some crazy stuff by the time we're done with it, I'm sure. But Dr. Hippie right now is just, again, trying to curve out as aggressively as he can. Blood to Ica to take care of the Blood Mage. Drops a 3-5 on the board. And this is going to be the pattern of this game, I imagine, from here is just question after question from Dr. Hippie. Hot Meowth has to find the answer but now he has one of the very best answers in the deck, the Wild Pyromancer commanding shout interaction. Yeah, you can do truly ludicrous things as the minions do not drop below one health on your side of the board when you do play commanding shout. So combined with Pyro and a hell of a lot of cheap spells, you can one, generate a lot of patrons and also just clear your opponent's side of the board. The Draconic Crusher from Hippie being in his hand now is actually really important. Just having a high cost dragon that you know you can go into later on, but having it able to proc these effects. The Blackwing Technician, that much more difficult to deal with at five health. Now he could just go with the Corruptor to just push more damage, or just go over to the Twilight Guardian. All of these are going to get the Dragon Synergy buffs. And you know, this is pretty much what you said earlier, so just a couple of minions are going to be on the board, extremely right. difficult to deal with, one whirlwind gone, and now, like, what does Hot Meowth even do at this point? 
Yeah, I mean, this deck is incredibly mentally taxing. The you know patron builds notoriously have been some of the most complex decks to play in the history of Hearthstone. This deck itself has so many different dynamics to it. There's arcane giant cal calculations going on. You have to evaluate how much value you need to get out of a blood warrior. There's potential to push all in with a grim patron instead of going for the arcane giant play. There's when to use your resources, as Hot Meowth is showing right now. The answer to that is apparently never. We're just going to sit back and chill. Yeah, and even while the problems of you know previous incarnations of the deck to now is that execute is two mana, yeah. and now there's only one execute in this version, so there are so many minions on time. Doc Tippy playing the 6-6 six, six there. Yo, that, you want to execute it. There's only one in the deck, Pop yep. Meowth, and he doesn't even have it. He doesn't have a great way to proc it either without, again, using up too many resources. So Pyro commanding Shout here can get him started. He has double inner rage, the coin and whirlwind. So I believe he can put together a oh. clear here, especially with the availability of that fiery war axe. So Hot Meowth's patience here gets rewarded. He's going to pay off. He's going to pick up a potential extra minion with his clear. Is it going to be enough though? Because again, the, these are just you know three minions from Hippie. Mm -hmm. the, say the board gets perfectly cleared. Well, then we can see Malkarok into Rag, into Corruptor for even more pressure. And I don't know if Hot Meowth can keep up, but he has drawn into the Patron. So there is an opportunity to go wide on the board in the next turn or so and try and make it as awkward for Dr. Tippy as possible to clear. Well, here's the thing. Hot Meowth's clear this turn is potentially going to use up all of the resources well, in his hand problem, right? for, the, for, the, for the patron combination. This is exactly what I was talking about in our little interlude in the previous turn is you really have to be reticent of how you're, you're uh, breaking up your resources in this kind of situation. Hot Meowth, though, does pick up the clear here in the end. One of the interesting quirks of Dr. Hippie's build is that he's cut Ravaging Ghoul out of his deck, which means this board state he's looking at now is actually a little awkward to deal with. Yeah, it's kind of tough. You know, the Inner Rage obviously not killing off the Pyro due to the commanding shout. Kind of awkward to deal with. He does have an Inner Rage of his own. Duck Tip, he is yep. running uh, one in his list, I believe. So he can use that to clear up the big guy, the weapon off Malkarok. Nice. And lining up perfectly with the Armorsmith. <laughs> that one attack weapon exactly when you need it. So not too bad for Dr. Hippie at the moment. Yep, sure we will see the Inner Rage come down here. Obviously, he's put that into his deck. It's a, Occasionally, you can use it as a tempo tool with the Azure Drake, but primarily backing up the, the plan of pure aggression in this Dragon Warrior build. He wants to potentially be able to burst with Grom just uh, one or two turns earlier than you normally can with the Inner Rage activator. So now, Hot Meow's hand just running a little bit dry, a little bit clunky right now. The Acolyte will be helpful at least just to redraw, but he's going to need some gas sometime very soon because the bomb train is just starting up right now for Dr. Hippie. Yeah, potential 9-9 nine, nine Ragnaros. It's just OP. 9-9 uh, nine, nine Rag just hits face every time. That's what I've heard. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Let's find out. I mean, so in all seriousness, the thing here is what we mentioned earlier, all the resources came down to clear a pretty hefty board on Doc Tippy's side, and now Hot Meowth doesn't have a lot to do. And Doc Tippy just has so many threats, he's just bomb after bomb, and I genuinely just don't know how Hot Meowth is going to get out of this one unless he has some insane combination of draws in the next turn or so, maybe with another Pyromancer. Yeah, I mean, he does have draws available to him. The Commanding Shout is a redraw. Acolyte can potentially be cycled next turn, but it looks like he's going to need his one copy of Execute sooner rather than later. That is a redraw as well. Uh, he's going to cast that first. I think the Commanding Shout is always getting cast this turn, so I would lead out with that. I like this ordering. Now the Acolyte and the Blood to Ica does allow him still to pick up the Execute off this draw but this is a nightmare scenario for him right now. There is just a rag left running roughshod on the board right now. Battle Rage goes off. Now oh. he has the execute, but that rag is going to stick to the board, setting up potential lethal for Dr. Hippie. Yeah, the Corruptor is going to help clear off one of the minions. The Ooh. weapon is going to clear the other, and that... But the Corruptor is just a little bit too early. Cannot play them both this turn, but still... 
pretty much set up a 50-50 chance at just winning this game outright for Duct Tape here. Yeah, and even if he does whiff here, his board state is so powerful that, again, it's going to be difficult for this deck to push back. So he's going to dig through here, use one of his weapon charges to take out the 3-1 and increase his chances. And we've seen a lot of games coming down to Ragnaros outcomes so far today. And this is another huge one. And apparently it always hits face. He's done it once. Let's see if it holds true. Yes, it does. And Doug Dibby takes the first game over Hot Meowth in a pretty convincing fashion, I'd have to say. Yeah, I mean, the big question mark over this series, we will keep coming back to it. This is a brave, gutsy decision from Hot Meowth to bring this unconventional deck, and every game it loses can just sow a seed of doubt in his decision-making process. So he's going to want to pick up a win with it as soon as possible, but we will find out. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a tough one if the games still go like that for Hot Meowth, but he's definitely not out of it. That is just game one out of the best of seven, and we're going to continue with this series very shortly. The Hearthstone World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. So you're back again. Again. Nice hair. Nice hair, you too. No mohawk? No? No. Mm. It looked really good. Uh, I don't think so. So, I drew you, because I was a big fan of you when you won. I was happy that you qualified. Thank you. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. Mm. Can you sign it for me? Yes. OK. In white. Dr. Hippie, 
XD. Привет всем, меня зовут Артем, я из Украины. Хотите уболеть за меня на чемпионате мира? Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Hippie versus Hot Meowth. Dr. Hippie's 1-0 up. Very convincing first game. And, you know, we've not spoken too much about Dr. Hippie overall, but yeah. definitely one of the breakout stars of the HGT uh, tournament series. Yeah, naturally, the attention of this series is on Hot Meowth and his crazy warrior deck. But Dr. Hippie, you know, even all the way back to, to the winter season where he was so close to qualifying, he, we established that he was a phenomenal player. You know, when we were doing initial research on him, the very first thing that you find is that in the January season, he was the first player to hit legend on the EU server out of anyone. And he played Breeze Mage to do that. That is just insane and just speaks to the, the quality, the dedication, the amount that he plays, all that good stuff. He has followed up that winter performance with an incredible 2016, culminating in qualifying towards the end of the year to be here now in the lead versus Hot Meowth playing for a semi-final spot at the World Championships. Yeah, it looks like it's all paying off for him so far. As you said, he is ahead and it is going to be Dr. Tibby's Tempo Mage versus Hot Meowth's Warrior again. Pretty sure Hot Meowth has just decided Look, here's a new signature deck. I'm going to play this till I win. I mean, who can blame him? He obviously feels, you know, he said going into this, if you look at the way the lineups line up, I feel like I'm favored. So he obviously thinks that... <laughs> he obviously <laughs> thinks that his warrior is favored. But I, go ahead. I wonder how afraid Hot Meowth is of European babbling books. Yes. <laughs> As we see the second Firelands portal of the day, from one babbling book, does the second one have a polymorph in it? That's my question. Right. It, it's hard for this particular babbling book to know exactly what Dr. Hippie wants this early in the game. So it just, just played it safe, gave him a Firelands Ball. I heard it's reasonable. a pretty good card yeah. overall. And we do see the Armor Smith first this time, probably identifying the fact that Homiath just needs to be more defensive overall because Tempo Mage has the ability to just completely blow out in the first few turns and end the game. I uh, see Frostbolt being used just to clear up the armor smith. Hippie doesn't want that one to live and you know potentially just make it even more difficult to clear out the game later on. Just let it live on one though. He does, yeah. It was kind of interesting to me because yeah. he actually had the opportunity if he traded there to push Hot Meowth up to two armor instead of zero armor. And actually giving your opponent some armor in this matchup is actually kind of good for you because it messes with their battle rage. Hot Meowth as well in this situation chose just to pile on five armor here, which can again potentially ma mess with his battle rage. But what I will say is in this matchup, the mage isn't going to get through this by hanging around forever. So they're going to have to push aggression at some point. So even if you do draw Battle Rage soon while you are not injured and have some armor stacked up, at some point the mage is going to have to make an aggressive push and that Battle Rage will go live sooner rather than later. Yeah, nothing more miserable than having to like Battle Rage for one just by having a minion on the board right. that's damaging you. Like, well, two mana draw a card, not the most fantastic turn in the world. Dr. B is going to clear up the armor smith follow up with the mana worm as well. And I kind of like this from Hippie, not doing anything too crazy yet, just building up the board, asking uh, Hot Me Out questions that he has to answer, and just really starting to stack together that damage. There's already Fireball, and as we saw the Firelands portal out of the Babbling Book, so Hippie's probably already preparing you know, his plans for those spells. Yeah, sure is. His hand doesn't really go anywhere too fast right now. Dr. Hippie is playing a Tempo Mage list with a, a lot of one-offs in it. There's one Flame Strike, one Firelands Portal, Antonidas is a one-off, of course, one Water Elemental, one Acolyte, one Torch, one Mirror Image, one Cult Sorcerer. This is borderline Reno deck territory, so <laughs> we'll make the deck a little bit inconsistent, and you can kind of see that in the reflection of just the mishmash of cards that he has in his hand right now. But still, if he pulls out the right tools at the right, at the right time, it can be extremely destructive. Yeah, and you know, speaking about the uh, potential of late game with a lot of armor for Hot Meowth, as you said, Hippie has Antonidas. Yep. So there is a chance that he can just power through. There's only one execute in the deck that we discussed in the last game. Sure. And there's a lot of targets Hot Meowth might need to execute before Antonidas comes out to play. 
So Arcane Blast is a tidy clear up here, and having drawn Mana Worm number two, he has a chance to flick the switch and go aggressive in this situation. Allows him to deal with the Acolyte of Pain without trading in his Mana Worm. The other play is just to go a little bit more conservative. He could actually Acolyte coin ping his own Acolyte and trade the Mana Worm if he wants to go for a resource game. Um, so this could actually be a key point where we start to see how Dr. Hippie is planning on approaching this matchup. It's definitely a tough one because we, we've gone on about Hot Meowth bringing this deck and how practiced he is with it. How, you know, how much time he's had to actually prepare and play the deck. How much time has Hippie had to practice against it, to right. be honest? Like, that's something yeah. to really consider. Tempo Mage versus Blood Warrior is not a matchup you really see every day on ladder. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, Rage, the, the creator of this deck, has actually come down to BlizzCon pretty much specifically to practice this deck with Hot Meowth. That's not a luxury that you get from Dr. Hippie's side of things, no. because you can sit with the creator and probably just the best player of this deck and play against these standard-ish decks that Dr. Hippie is playing pretty well. And most people that you practice against will be able to play them to a high level. Who does Dr. Hippie grab as a practice partner to be able to get a competent level of practice against this Blood Warriors deck? Yeah, well, this is when he hopes Naaman's played a thousand games with the deck <laughs> out of nowhere. And he's like, oh, hey, my teammates here, perfect. Yeah. Hippie is starting to stack up a lot of damage, though, and this is just very reminiscent of uh, the, the last game where there's a good amount of threat on the board, even though they're only mana worms. The, you know, three threes are going to start pushing the health of Hot Meowth, and talking of pushing health, he's really going for it. Arcane Missiles into Fireball, going to buff those mana worms up to five attack each. Dr. Hippie saying, OK, let's end this game now. Yeah, I like this line. Hot Meowth, yet again, he's drawing really well with this deck, I'd have to say say, hitting that Pyromancer commanding shout clear in both of the games so far. So he does have an answer to this board state, but Dr. Hippie's response to the situation, going aggressive. I talked about that break point on the previous turn. Dr. Hippie actually ended up being even more aggressive than that, playing the Acolyte, the Mana Worm, and coining out the Arcane Blast, essentially combining both of the plays. And he's following that up with even more ruthless aggression here. Yeah, this is this is a tough moment now for Dr. Hippie. After that, you know, highly aggressive turn, as you mentioned last turn, this is kind of tough because suddenly Sorcerer's Apprentice just doesn't do the things you want it to do the turn you play it, right? right. You, know, you want to get the reduction on the spells and then pump out some spells the same turn. At the moment, it's just two, two three twos on the board, but this does say top me out. You pretty much have to clear these guys or, or you could just die this turn. Yeah, Blood Mage, Blood Mage in a rage, and the War Axe can take care of this. He's actually going to play even more conservative here. So using the blood to Ica essentially allows him to skip the armor up and be confident about it. So using that blood to Ica there basically allowed him the freedom to develop this entirely new 3-5 on the board. But hey, Dr. Hippie's hand has a little bit of game against 3-5s right now. Yeah, and I'm just imagining Babbling Buck into another Firelands Paul. <laughs> <laughs> just, just Paul them to the face, turn after turn. Save that for next turn. So Firelands Paul to face is one off from the uh, fabled Leroy of Legends. So I'm sure we will see him just take care of the 3-5 here. But yeah. well, so if he Firelands Paul's face, he's down to seven. You can expect him to armor up. You don't even have Portal Ping next turn. So even just looking at the face plan, it doesn't seem like you get there with the hand you have right now. Now, so, oh, Hippie disagrees. Okay. He is just sending it straight downtown. Picks up a 4 4 for his trouble. Shield block comes out here, which can immediately give Hot Meow some stability. Pairs it with the Battle Rage. That and that shot there from Dr. Hippie could just be the one overly ambitious play that Hot Meowth needed to turn the corner in this matchup. Yeah, that pretty much unlocked a good battle rage for Hot Meowth. Yep. Even more cycle with the Thanos, which was going to happen, but also a clear on the minion. It was only a 4 4. Oh. <laughs> that <laughs> missile. Don't know why we're hooting like owls, guys. The uh, missiles but... is potentially huge because he can protect oh, his 3 1. Hit, off on tiger. Taking out the 3 1, he's potentially got another guaranteed oh. 5 damage from that tiger coming through with. Oh, the Pyromancer commanding shout clear with the whirlwind pickup, though. This is an enormous draw. The whirlwind here for Hot Meowth. Arcane Giant is down to three, so he can tempo out an AA on the board this turn if he wants to potentially skip out the Blood Warriors plan and just go for the tempo. Bab Babbling Book will end this game, I am telling you right now. So, 
He can slam his own Akali, which takes the Tiger down to three. He can Whirlwind, which takes it down to He's one. one. Oh. He needs another that, spell. That is a clear on that Tiger. Yeah, that, that is... Wait, oh. what? Oh, it's not a clear. Hot Meow chose to just armor up instead, and that leaves him open for so much damage. He could just die. Effigy, Effigy is not... not it. Oh, okay. Hang on, do you just ping your 1-1 one -one and play Effigy? Go face? I mean, you turn the card face up for sure if you do that, so... You can't ignore the Tiger, though. It's true, <laughs> I absolutely agree with you, but I think he just wants to play the Apprentice here for extra pressure, just make sure he maxes out. Just pushes the damage face here. Not killing this Tiger, is this gonna just bite hot me out here? Quite literally. Battle Rage again for Hot Meowth. The Whirlwind can cycle off the Acolyte here, clear out the Babbling Book, which will proc the Effigy, but Hot Meowth has to be considerate of Counterspell as well here. Gets the news Ooh. that it is not Mirror Image, it's not Counterspell. The Effigy now procs. That being a 2-1 is a big deal for Dr. Hippie because that's just extra damage. The Execute draw is big for Hot Meowth, though. Yeah, there's still a lot of damage left in Dr. Hippie's deck. Can actually get a lot of work done, but he is down to whatever he draws off the top. Hot Meowth is now hit the point where he needs to just sit down. Like, he is already sat down, so he's, you know, step one done. He's uh, just got to think about exactly what he needs to do to survive in this game. This is so close. Not good enough. Oh, There's just no answer. It. He could execute the Tiger, but that just leaves the damage on board. Chose to skip the armor up to cycle the uh, map to the Golden Monkey there. And this deck, I mean, it's such a complex deck. It's such a high-risk deck. Dr. Hippie as well is, you know, exposing the deck's tendencies very well. He's creating the right board states. He's being aggressive in the right spots. Maybe one overly ambitious play in that game. But overall, he's potentially making Hot Meowth regret his lineup decisions here. Yeah, you know, this series is all ending up on this warrior. And if, Dr., uh, if Hot Meowth, sorry, can get a win, but we are going to prepare for the next game, so do not go anywhere. new cut. I need to phrase out that emo face. I'm in for like more serious competition now. Take that emotional aspect a little bit away and become a more serious person. Do you feel any different at the World Championship than you did uh, when you were going into the America's Championship? So I feel um, slightly more nervous, but I know it's the same format. Like the opponents are slightly stronger, but I prepared like even longer for this tournament. In the end, I, I know like I need to be all of them to like guarantee my spot to have the potential to get like be the world champion. And winning BlizzCon will mean that I'm one of the best players in Hearthstone, so I can show off to everyone and show off how good a player I, I am. I want to show off my secret strategy to success if I actually win the whole thing, so. Wait, did you say you have a secret success to winning? Yeah, I can't tell you that. You can only say if you win BlizzCon? If I win, before I win, I, I had to keep a secret. If I lose, then I'm just unlucky but the secret is probably still really good, so I'll probably keep it to myself still until I actually become the world champion. If they really want to hear the secret to winning, hot me out, hot secret, then they better root for you to win. Hot me out, one of the players who showed the most improvement 
from his qualifying performance to the opening week performance is struggling a little bit now. The, you know, his main story, of course, is his Warrior deck, but he's also included some very different tech choices across some of the other decks he's chose to brought to tournament. What, what do you think has led to these choices overall, Sol? Well, Hotmeath is a, a contributor to the Vicious Syndicate Data Reaper project, which is a, essentially a massive you know, stats dump Hearthstone project <laughs> that piles together. <laughs> he is indeed. Uh, piles <laughs> together a huge amount of data from ladder stats and private testing as well, and can pretty much just output scenarios and output strong lineups, strong cards, win rates, all this kind of stuff. And it's actually been very accurate in predicting HCT results based on lineups in the past. So Hot Meowth actually uses that to leverage his own lineups here. And it's what leads him to decisions like this warrior deck, like ancestral knowledge in his shaman, like Barnes in his druid. But again, Hot Meowth back to the well on this warrior. And I have to say, he looked shaky in that last game. That game looked winnable. I think Hot Meowth may have thrown it away. Yeah, I completely agree. And one of the main problems here as we get into game three with Dark Tippy on the Shaman, Hot Meowth sticking to his guns, of course, is that this deck, I feel, is very difficult to play when you're playing against someone who knows every single card in the deck. You queue this thing up on ladder and you have so much more of an advantage because no one plays it so your opponent doesn't mulligan correctly and just has blatantly a lack of experience versus it. But when your opponent is Dr. Hippie and he's had plenty of time to completely go over the list, knows every card, knows general play style, he can do things with Shaman, for example, of like, keeping a lightning storm in the opening mulligan. Sure. Yeah, I mean, when you queue into a warrior on ladder, you're, you know, dragons or control, dragons or control. That's basically your mulligan decision, and you try and hedge your bets, so you have to get some kind of read as to what the meta is, what's more common. You definitely get an inflated win rate playing an unusual deck on ladder because of that exact mulligan decision that you talked about. But I also feel like there's an inflated win rate of combo decks in general on ladder because combo decks are easier to expose for good players because they generally have quite limited tool sets and they have holes in their game plan with all these combo cards that they have to pack in. Good players are better at exposing those kinds of holes and that might just be what we're seeing here from Dr. Hippie. Yeah, game going off, not too much of a crazy start. Feral Spirit did come down, but the age-old answer of Fiery War Axe over the course of two turns. Seen that interaction a couple of times. What worries me here for Hot Meowth is that repeatedly he seems to just be drawing the stone cold cashews with this deck over and over again. And he's still not able to pick up a win. He's had these big pyro clears against board flooding decks in his hand over and over again. And this is really what you're looking for. This opening hand, Acolyte, War Axe, Pyromancer with the coin, with the spells, with blood to Ica. This should be able to rip apart the kind of decks that he's queuing into. Dr. Hippie's still finding a way to get over over the line. Yeah, he's pretty much one commanding shout from a really good board clear. The only thing that worries me in this specific matchup is he might be able to clear the board, but Shaman are pretty good at refill, and they seem to do it with cards along the lines of Thing, of, uh, thing From Below, and even just cheap uh, you know, board fill cards like Feral Spirit, sure. Totem Golem. They have relevant threats that don't cost a lot of mana, pressing hero power every turn to generate the totem. How many times can th this warrior deck actually continually clear the board versus Shaman? Well, the goal, like absolute dream world with this warrior deck, you're going to go off with your big pyro clear on a turn where they don't have a spirit clause equipped for one, and then you're going to hope no uh, maelstrom portal in the hand. That way, you usually end up generating a couple of small minions on the board yourself that can stick around because of the commanding shout, and then you at least have that one turn platform where you can fight back with some minion presence and the shaman can't deal with it. But Again, that is dream world scenario. Hot Meowth is going to have to engineer this matchup very carefully. I did speak to him specifically about this matchup, and he said he feels like it's favored, but it's very easy to make a mistake. And if you make a mistake, it can just absolutely snowball out of your control. We're going to see if we can play the game without too many mistakes then, because Dark Tibby is not the opponent you want to slip up against. And Looking at Dr. Tibby's hand, he's got kind of a lot of great options here. There are, you know, the mid-range, um, medium-level threats of Totem Golem, the second Flame Tongue as well, mm -hmm. to provide threats almost out of nothing through totems you just have on the board regardless. So you can start to chip up this damage. Hot me out on 20 already. 
This is the play that leaps out to me. I think if he's going to end up with a thing from below here, then the yeah, flame tongue double trade and thing from below looks like the most potentially powerful play. And this is kind of the most awkward. Has that one big chunky minion on the board that starts to ask questions to hop me out to execute. But here you go, yet again. Hop me out in the top half of his deck gets the Pyromancer commanding shout combination. I mean, to be fair to this deck, this is what it's built to do. It power cycles. It draws a bunch of cards. You have these answers consistently. And then you try and dominate the late game with huge turns. Emperor, Arcane Giants, Elise as an eventual win condition if all else goes wrong as well. So, you know, the amount of card draw you're entitled to hit your combos very commonly, but it is worrying to me that Hot Meowth, to my eyes, is drawing very well, but still isn't able to push this deck over the line. Yeah, he can clear the board at this time. Ah, is he going for the... Battle Rage and leaving up the thing. Okay. I actually like this play. I think leveraging the Battle Rage here is a big deal. You still have a, a decent amount of health. That 5-2 is hardly going to terrorize you from here. And if he drew an Inner Rage, he still had the full clear available yeah. to him. So he even has that upside as well. So I don't mind this particular line. Yeah, and the benefit here is Hot Meowth has actually cleared most of the board away without using his whole hand, which yeah. is something that happened in the previous games. He right. pretty much burnt his hand because he had to clear the board. Um, and now he has follow-up of Shield Block to continue to cycle. Now he has the second commanding shout, Thanos, if he requires not for the spell power, but just to drop a minion, draw a card afterwards. You know, he can refill his hand and start to build up towards some form of win condition and pressure Dr. Hippie down, but Hippie's kind of wishing he had his spirit claws now, I think. Yeah, he absolutely is. And, you know, crucially, he's managed to hold on to that single copy of Execute in the deck as well because there's Thunder Bluff Valiants, there's other huge threats that need taking care of in this deck from Dr. Hippie. So as soon as that one Execute goes, you basically give your opponent the green light to just start dropping all the big threats that they can. So I like Hot Meow's play here, just investing a little bit of his life total. Again, especially with double Armor Smith in hand already, his rebound potential is extremely high. So this is, again, a risky play from Hot Meow, but I think this one is correct in the end. Hey, it looks like he's going to hex. I was just, just about to say that th that pyro, I feel, needs to be answered somehow. Oh, yeah. Because if there's the second commanding shout, which we can see, of course, there is, there's the second commanding shout, that next turn can be absolutely horrible for you. So Dr. be really showing that pyromancer a lot of respect using the hex there. And Homeath is just going to continue to cycle. As you said, it's what the deck does. Pretty much cycles through its whole deck to be able to dig down into those win conditions. Try and get that Emperor off, which I feel now is the next step for Hot Me Out. Get a great Emperor, hit that Blood Warriors, and then just burst onto the board with like multiple Arcane Giants. Yeah, he needs to pick up a, a Whirlwind Activator for his Blood Warriors combo. Like, Pyromancer can do the job, but it's less than ideal. It's expensive. It over damages your minions in the process. It kills itself, you know, all this kind of stuff. You'd like to hold on to it for an additional clear. So he'd like to pick up a whirlwind effect to start activating his wing condition here. But he has managed to, as you say, clear the board while not only not spending all his cards, I think he actually increased yeah. his hand <laughs> size on the turn that he cleared. That's what leaves him in such a powerful position. That's the difference between this game and the previous ones we saw where he got the board clear together, but he exhausted all his resources in the process. Yep. See, Doc Tippy now just really taking his time with these turns. You've got to feel that against this deck, that if you slip up once, you can just get, the, the game's just over for you. Just as much as we've been talking about how tricky the, this warrior deck is to play, it's also very tricky to play against. He's going to go ahead and just hex the Acolyte of Pain here. So this is actually a very important decision from Dr. Hippie because this is a final signal that says, OK, if you live long enough this game to activate your Arcane Giant Wing condition, you can have them. I'm not going to yeah. hold back hexes just in case you just eventually tempo out one Arcane Giant on the board and try and use it for tempo. Like, if you get to that stage of the game, GG, well played. You deserve this win. I'm just going to try and push. I've got Bloodlust in my hand to back all this up. I don't need to worry about your Arcane Giants. I'm going to try and end the game before you get there. Exactly. And also, you've got to think, if the Arcane Giants are hitting the board, Blood Warriors should be coming down as well. Right. So. You can't hex four Arcane Giants, so you may as well just get ahead now and do your best to take the game early. 
Maelstrom Paul was yeah. huge. I talked about this exact scenario. The pyro turn often needs an answer because there's annoying minions in the way. Maelstrom Portal, the perfect answer, picks up a Dragon Egg as well. How is a Dragon Egg against a Whirlwind deck, Raven? Heard it's pretty good. Right, you sweet. gain minions, and you see now Hippie not even bothered about getting the Thunder Bluff on the board. He's saying, okay, if you don't do something quite miraculous now, I am going to blood you, bloodlust you in the face and end this game. Hot Meowth only on 12 health. He has to make something big happen, although with that amount of spells in his hand, I'm pretty sure he can get his Arcane Giants down to zero at least. Yeah, but he just doesn't have the time to get this off. I think he, he might need to uh, cycle his Blood Mage here, although Blood Mage is one of the big tools he would want. Like, Blood Mage Whirlwind could potentially be devastating on this board position. And there is so much damage coming back at him next turn with the Bloodlust. Hot Meowth hanging on by an absolute knife edge in this position. Yeah, he needs to clear off way more of these minions to survive this Bloodlust. Obviously, Hot Meowth is aware there's a Bloodlust in the deck, and maybe Doc Tippy just going super wide is, is, you know, pretty much identified that that's one of his cards. Yep, yeah, Slam Hot Meowth, again. Full respect, full respect to this board. Yep, definitely respecting Bloodlust again. Talking about hand reading, such an important skill in Hearthstone. That far Oof. left card has been there pretty much since the beginning of the game. So Hot Meowth has that pegged as a potential finisher, in this case, Bloodlust. And look at this turn again. Hot Meowth did a great job of surviving, clearing the board, has plenty of resources in hand to end the game. But the problem is, Doc Tippy just has. It has Thunderbluff hero power thing from below. Yep. And you've just got to say, Hot Meowth, how many times can you clear the board? Dr. Tippy's no doubt, you know, mentally tracking the cards that are being played. Mm -hmm. Two pyros are gone. Whirlwind, I think, is gone now. It's, you know, what else is even left to challenge this? Yeah, the hero power is going to come down. The decision now for Dr. Hippie is, does he need to push this three or does he need to respect the Blood Mage? The Blood Mage will definitely allow Whirlwind to do significant work onto his board. So this is a big decision point for Dr. Hippie, but I think... Oh, he's going to trade, with okay. With the backup of Bloodlust oh. in his hand, huge call because the Whirlwind was drawn. But with the Bloodlust in his hand, he feels like if this board sticks, which is, is entitled to, he doesn't need that three extra damage. He has it covered, but hot me out here has a huge turn with life gain from the armor smiths oh, and potentially the blood warrior as well he can cast oh, two spells amazing. one spell first get the arcane giants down on the board then whirlwind then blood warriors then the arcane giants are free is this finally the deck coming together and showing its power we are about to find out getting the double giants down this is yep. one of the weird interactions we talked about of you have to Play a giant for mana sometimes, then we'll win, then get the Blood Warriors after. Feels a little bit janky. Hot Meowth is going to gain a lot of armor for there, but how much damage is actually represented now? There is what? So Bloodlust just by itself is 12 damage. That is exactly 20 by my count. Is that right? 12 plus 3, 15, 17. It's enough is what matters. The damage is going to go through. Hot Meowth misses out again. He was one turn away from stabilizing. He was one in a rage away from stabilizing. Another cheap spell that could have let him have a bigger combo turn there on the Blood Warrior's turn. This deck is getting so close. It's pulling together nine out of ten of the keys every time, but this is one of the weaknesses with combo decks. You need it all, and he's just not getting it all together. Yeah, incredibly tense series so far. You know, this deck, is it going to make it? We're going to find out right after this. Hearthstone World Championship is sponsored in part by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers.
everybody here has experience now, but you have more experience than a lot of the players. Yeah. Do you think that you playing multiple times gives you an edge against some of your opponents? Yeah, for sure I have more edge because, especially because my hair, it will confuse my opponents. They'll look across the, the desk and get distracted. Yeah. Do you think Europe's the best region in the world? As yes. far as competitive arts goes, whoa, whoa, okay. Isn't it? I don't know. It is. If you have fans that are going to tune in and watch you, you know, fans that maybe watched your run through, even when you took second place in winter, or fans that watched you win when you qualified, what would you say to those fans right now? Hey, guys. I'm just Dr. Keeper. This could be the last game of this set as Doc Tippy is 3-0 up versus Hot Meowth. Interesting warrior deck. He's not quite been able to make it work, but Doc Tippy has got his zoo as his last deck. And I mentioned right at the start of this series, yeah. it's almost as if this warrior deck was purely built to beat zoo. I would agree with that assessment. I mean, classically, patron built in every iteration just farm some zoo like the in this case like the pyro commanding shout clear that you've seen go off in every single game so far absolutely destructive against zoo what i will say is outside of pyro commanding shout one of the big ways you snatch the game from zoo was a patron turn where you would clear out with whirlwinds and then you'd like execute the one remaining threat on the board and that would just be gg that is much harder to do now with one execute in the deck and with it costing twice as much so there is a little bit of game in this matchup left for the zoo, but Hot Meowth still will feel confident that he can at least get one game on the board right now, although the Execute Arcane Giant opening hand, not what he wanted to be looking for, but the other two cards, Blood to Ica and Fiery War Axe, that is much more like it. Yeah, and Hot Meowth is going to have to be confident and get this win. He's the last representative from the Americas region who is still in the tournament. And we still have two EU players. In the it was all looking so good for North America as we came into today. You know, the the North American players were chirping away about their sudden newfound opinion on what the best region is. But Hot Meowth is flying the flag solo right now, and he's not in a good spot. But the fiery war axe on the knife juggler here means he is at least in a good spot in this game four. Yeah, you've got to be feeling good when you start with that weapon. Win rates go up quite ridiculously when you can fire War Axe straight up the bat, especially versus Zoo. Dark Tippy goes for the... goes for the Discover and actually doesn't have too many great options. It's just... I, he's taking his time. I, but I feel like Possessed Villager is going yeah. to be the... I'm a fan of Murlocs, so, you know, don't get me wrong. But I just feel like Possessed Village is better. Yeah, I'll go out on a limb here and say that you take the minion that doesn't die outright to a Whirlwind in the, you know, eight Whirlwind deck. <laughs> that, that probably seems like a good plan. Yeah, it seems relatively correct. Imgang Boss going to come down here, though, which is a, a potential sticking point for Hot Meowth, but I think his decision to hold on to the War Axe here is with the threat of Councilman and Imgang Boss in mind. The big power three drops, these are the must-kill minions in the deck. These are the ones that can really carry the matchup away from you, but Hot Meowth, since that War Axe draw, just a little bit clunky. Battle Rage, Blood Warriors, Arcane Giant, not the cards he's looking for right now. This game, the one game where almost single hand Handedly, Pyromancer commanding shout solos the game is the one where it's not coming together for him just yet. Yeah, and I think Dark Tibby is gonna do well, gonna have to do something with Blood to Ica. Maybe could have even aimed it at the imp gang boss to clear it off, leave the tokens up, and then plant into a whirlwind. But this works out much better. Just putting everything down, clears off everything but one imp and can get a really good battle rage off now. The cycle is so important in the earlier game. We saw great board clears, but no refill for Hot Meow's hand. So getting this Battle Rage off is huge now. It is. It's a really big deal. His hand was running dry and still. I mean, the two cards he picked up are not fantastic, but, you know, imagine if he hadn't cycled and these were his next two draws one at a time. It, he would be in trouble. So he's at least filtered some of these cards out of his deck. He's getting closer to that Pyromancer, 
to the commanding shell, to the swing cards that he needs. But Dr. Hippie has plenty of gas from here and he has great sticky minions here with the possessed villager that he can use to bank one of those defenders of Argus that he has on a following turn. Yeah, and having double Defender of Argus, as long as some of these minions survive the next turn, being able to just stack those on top of each other, we saw how difficult it can be to clear high health minions, requiring just so many more spell effects. Look at these draws. I was going to say earlier to your point where, you know, if these two cards, the Thanos and the Inner Rage, were the draws for the next two turns, two turns worth of pretty much dead draws versus Zoo is game ending. And speaking of it, things that can end games, Doomguard is definitely one of them. Doesn't even need to play it this turn, so he can get away with Argus and the Imp instead and still get a good trade on the Thanos. Yeah, he also doesn't necessarily need to play the Imp this turn. He could just play the Argus and then next turn just Imp, Doomguard, guarantee oh. discarding exactly like two it. cards. I like it. And then, you know, he does lose the second Defender of Argus, which is another potential power card. But yeah, this is a decision for Dr. Hippie. It's not as obvious as it looks. Holding back the Imp here definitely has some merit. Yeah, and, and this is one of the issues as well with the deck is that your know, Doom Guard, oh, it'll, get, it'll get executed. We can see Hot Meowth does have access to the execute. Yeah. But what about Councilman, the, the two elves? What about the other Doom Guard if we get that far? Right. All these high health minions are almost impossible to deal with if the game goes that long. Yeah, I think Hot Meowth's just going to be forced to cycle again here. The Balrage is a reasonable pickup, allows him to leverage this Armor Smith with the Inner Rage. Shield block drawn, that's a brick. Acolyte as well. Not coming together, still no Pyro, still no Commanding Shout. No Whirlwind to pair with the Blood Mage while he had it. This could all be slipping away, but now the Councilman draw could potentially interrupt the Doom Guard turn for Dr. Hippie. If there's someone that's gonna interrupt the Doom Guard, Councilman's a pretty good option, to yeah. be honest. Like, dropping that minion down might draw out this Execute from Hot Meowth. I mean, Argus just looks really nice here as well, potentially. Yeah, take I, your pick. Yeah, any, any of his options in this situation are looking pretty rosy, it's just... As long as it's not tap pass. Tap Tap Pass yeah. seems bad, as yeah. does just play the Doom Guard without playing the Imp first. Wouldn't yeah. advise either of those no. plays. But the other options are great. Right. <laughs> I mean, Argus on the right-hand side, trade the Crazed Alchemist, I think that's valid. Argus in the middle, trade the 3-4 then as a value trade, I think that's valid. Malkazar's Imp Doom Guard, I think that's valid. Tap Darksha Councilman, I think that's valid. <laughs> there's so many potential plays this turn. Yeah, looks like he's going to go with the one you picked first, so yeah. you get a prize, so it'll not work out what it is yet but you'll get some. Well, to be a fair, cookie. if you I named every possible play, I was going to get it right. No, but you end. got the one you named first, All right, which, fair, is, the, which is the win condition. Fair. You get a cookie later on. Ooh. But this is not looking great for, for Hot Me Out here. He is putting such a heavy emphasis on the cycle, which is exactly what he needs to do. You said it earlier, Pyro commanding shout can actually pull him back into this game. I feel like it's not going to be game ending on this board anymore, right. but it can definitely snap the game back in to at least his favor a little bit. Yeah, but Hot Meowth, I think he's he's playing it well. He's had a pretty poor hand, but this just kind of shows the potential dominance of the matchup. He's just able to shield block twice there. He's in a comfortable position in terms of life total, and he's just trying to lay back and force Dr. Hippie to overcommit. You know, this is very reminiscent of a, a tank up warrior just sitting back and forcing the opponent to overcommit into Brawl. He wants to wait for good value to come out here before he uses his execute. He wants to be able to pick up a, a high value threat, you know, at least a Darkshire Councilman with that execute. Yep. And Duck Tippy's going to go for the 2 1 drops into the Doom Guard. He's okay with throwing away the Councilman. He's going to cycle two cards because of the Malkazar's Imp on the board. He's going to go into one Imp and an Abusive Sergeant as well. So not the, uh, not the flashiest of draws, but the Abusive Sergeant definitely useful for just pushing more damages. He's just put Hot Me Out down to 17 and said, Look, you either clear this board or you are going to die. Yeah, so Hot Meowth here has things to consider. Whirlwinds are very valuable cards in this deck. They're great tools with the commanding shout turn with Pyromancer. They're a needed activator for your uh, Blood Warrior turns a lot of the time. So Acolyte Whirlwind versus Acolyte Blood to Ica versus Acolyte Slam. You know, all these things have their own merits, their own strengths and weaknesses in this situation. So Hot Meowth does need to consider what his starting point is, but because his turn will vary so much based on what he draws, he also needs to act quickly 
quickly to make sure he has enough time left to make the crucial decisions. Yeah, and this is going to be a real test of how well Hot Meowth knows this deck because a lot of the time, similar to Miracle Rogue turns, a lot of the time you're just playing intuition on anything. You know, you just expect, you, you've done those draws a million times. You've seen almost every card all the time in certain orders. That you just play off, you know, what you know with, with a little bit of prep in there. I mean, has started and just going to end his turn, execute off the Doom Guard, Three, reduce five, the damage six, down eight, a bit. Nine, 11 damage already if you include the Abusive Sergeant. So the Dark Peddler cannot fish out lethal, but it's getting so close for Dr. Hippie. Remember, one Armor Smith down, both Shield Blocks down at this point. So Hot Meowth's ability to rebound is actually very low. But yet again, look how close he is to the win condition with the Arcane Giants. But they're just not going to be good enough. He needs to dress this board state first. He needs the Pyro commanding shout turn or a close equivalent before he oh, can get anywhere near. The Soulfire is going to help finish this game over the next couple of turns for Dr. Hippie. And he's just going to do it. Yeah, who can blame him? He just soul fires, gets rid of this. It allows him to life tap and potentially pull out better cards. Cycles there off the imp, moves towards his Doom Guard number two, which would probably just be completely backbreaking. And now Dr. Hippie is close to the line of a 4 0 sweep against Hot Meowth's unusual warrior deck. Oh, this is so tense for Hot Meowth. He pretty much needs to draw perfectly and pull out an actual miracle for him to be able to clear this board and also just not die in the following turn. There's Commanding Shout. There's Commanding Shout. This is a big deal. He has a lot of draws for his Pyro here. He can even cast Commanding oh. Shout first. Yep. That interaction works. If you Commanding Shout, then draw the Pyro, the Pyro is still unable to die by the time you play it. Okay, it looks like he's all in on this Commanding Shout for a draw to get that Pyro. That's not that it. not it. He's whiffed. There's no way out. The Giants are going to come down, but there's just no answer to this board state. He shows his hand. He That's shows how it. close to disaster it was. Dr. Hippie gives up the well played. An incredible dominant performance from him, but I have to rewind. I don't want to give Hot Meow too much of a hard time here, but it was such a crucial decision. I don't know if he missed it. I don't know if he opted out of it, but he could have killed that Stranglethorn Tiger way back in game number two, I believe, yep. which would have got him a win with that Warrior deck early, potentially could have seen a completely different series. But from Hippie's perspective, his Mimi persona exposed at this point. This guy is a stone cold killer. And right now he's one of the top four Hearthstone players in the world. Yeah, his win over Hot Meowth puts him up against Chonsu tomorrow. And he's going to be fighting for that place in the finals. We are going to hear from Dr. Hippie right now as he's on stage with Frodan. Dr. Hippie, 4-0 was a very dominant performance. Did you feel like it was one-sided? Was it that easy for you? Доктор Хиппи, ты выиграл 4-0. Это было прекрасно. Как ты чувствуешь? Я, честно, честно скажу, что не ожидал 4-0. Я ожидал серьезной битвы. 4-3 ожидал. Но получилось 4-0. Uh, I was not really expecting that. It was great. 4-0 was, like, unexpected. Do you get some joy of eliminating the last remaining player from the Americas? <laughs> Рад ли ты, что ты выбил последнего игрока из США? Отчасти мне грустно из-за этого. Yeah, he's a little sad, actually. <laughs> well, I definitely see the rivalry continues in Europe, stays alive with two players remaining in top four. Congratulations to our last quarterfinalist who's able to advance through, Dr. Hippie.